iPhone Goni has absolutely exploded in intensity over the course of the last 12 hours out here towards the east of the Philippines. You can see infrared satellite imagery uh, just tells the whole story here. That absolutely uh, perfect radio outflow. You have a very symmetrical storm. And look at that defined eye continuing to set up very cold cloud tops aloft. It's why the Joint Typhoon Warning Center now estimating wind speeds in the center of the circulation at Cat 3 equivalent and strengthening. This right here, by the way, this is 24 hours ago from my last video that I made, and this is it now. Just a night and day difference, and it shows how much the storm system has intensified as it continues to track off here uh, towards the west. Visible satellite imagery as well. The sun is coming up here on the morning of the 30th of October 2020. Always important to know the date because these uh, videos and the forecasts change from day to day. Uh, you can just see those overshooting cloud tops on the northern periphery of this, that defines circulation, that inflow coming in from the south on water vapor imagery as well. I'm showing you these different imageries because this is what we use to estimate the intensity of the storm and all signs point towards, yeah, an intensifying storm system. Actually, Dvorak analysis went from a tropical depression 48 hours ago to now a category three storm system. That is that in just the last few hours, moving over a pocket of very warm water. Uh, I'll get to that in just a second. Do want to let you know, follow me on all these social media platforms. If you are not subscribed to me on YouTube, follow me on Facebook or Twitter, please do so. I put more updates out on those outside of these videos as well. All right, let's talk about this storm system. Right now, though, it does have sustained winds based on satellite from the Joint Typhoon Warning Center of 222 kilometers per hour. I do hear some of your guys' feedback. I've been using knots. People have been asking for KPH. So 222 KPH would gust up to 268 KPH. JMA says 970 hectopascals. I think it's lower than that just because we have a very quickly deepening storm system. I think they're a little bit behind the ball on that. We don't have recon to fly out there. I'll put a link down in the, in the uh, description of this video as well about a video I made a, a while back talking about once we did have recon actually out here, had some pretty incredible measurements with uh, typhoons back in the 70s and 80s. Movement is towards the west at 15 kilometers per hour. It is moving over this. This is a pocket of warm waters up to two to three degrees Celsius above average. This is fuel for the fire. It is like just taking gasoline, pouring on something flammable, tossing it on a bonfire, and just letting this storm blow up. And that's exactly what's happening because in our forecast, it is gonna to continue to track towards the west here and likely become a super typhoon. Right now though, it is tracking along the southwestern periphery of an area of high pressure here. Does have a little bit of extra support with this trough coming in out of southeastern Japan. Not enough to turn it towards the north by no means, but it's just another factor that we're seeing with this intensifying storm. By the way, that is Atsani out there. I'll talk about that in just a second. First, let's talk about our, our big storm system here that is currently a threat. Cat 5 equivalent, 135 knots right there. Cat 5. We're looking at Super Typhoon Cat 5 equivalent. Good news, it could weaken just slightly before making landfall here on the east coast of the Philippines. But as we've seen time and time again, uh, these storms tend to maintain strength. Look at this, 130 up to 140 knots. That's the Cat 5 right there. 139 knots is a Category 5 storm. 130 knots is a Super Typhoon. So at landfall, this is still going to be a Super Typhoon according to the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. Uh, any location out ahead of this storm is going to be looking at significant storm surge, flooding, damaging winds, basically from Casiguran all the way down there. It's San Jose, a little bit further inland. Most of this is north of Manila, but around Angeles City, I mean, th it's going to be rolling right over you. Yeah, the mountains do stop a little bit if it was further towards the north, but in this area actually brings a uh, a wide swath of vulnerability a little bit further inland. These are the mountains I'm talking about, by the way. They do stop and they cause some pretty significant rainfall, but they're not as steep and not as large as in northern Luzon. So if this was a track a little bit further towards the north, that actually would be good news for the bulk of the population. Not for the people that live there, but for the bulk of the population. This is the latest track. Here's a city just in the right front quadrant. If this track goes exactly on this uh, 
this place, which it could waver a little bit, but Dingalon. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm sure you guys, you always correct my accent and the way I pronounce things. You're going to be looking at heavy rainfall, extreme heavy rainfall. I'm talking about serious flooding, especially in the rivers leading out to the ocean there. Severe storm surge and some damaging winds at the severe level. Uh, if this comes on shore as a super typhoon in that specific town, right front quadrant. That's what I worry about, just on that right side where that inner eye wall is going to be passing over, especially if it passes over any metro area. Talking about storm surge, though, basically the entire coast right here, all the way even north of Kasiguran, is going to be looking at a likely storm surge with even the possibility further towards the south and off towards the north. And also, I didn't even mark it, but if it does take that track just north of Manila, we could actually see some of those winds come into the bay. I've seen this before. Rojas Boulevard actually getting flooded because the water comes up and it just pushes and uh some areas of metro manila actually see a bit of a storm surge if those storms track just north of the city and they maintain that intensity this is numerical guidance i'm just showing it to you to give you a good representation of where this is going but the ecmwf and the gfs have not caught up at all with this intensifying storm system so it's still showing a pretty weak storm Another model run or two, I think it's going to start to catch up, but I found that really interesting. It actually is starting off with a much weaker storm because the numerical guidance just has not caught up with it. But anyways, regardless, it gives you an idea of where this is going and where we could be seeing a landfalling super typhoon out here. So, Coney, possible super typhoon at landfall. I think possible is definitely uh, an understatement, at least with the Joint Typhoon Warning Center saying more and more likely if it's not it's going to be close damaging winds and uh, storm surge in that right front quadrant and uh, uh tropical cyclone warning uh signals three to four possible across much of southern luzon uh that was put actually out by pagasa they're saying we could be at the four i think with this intensifying storm five might not be ruled out but definitely three to four across a good swath there from them. So even if you're not in the warning now, if you're ahead of the storm, just prepare like you are in the warning. It's one reason why I don't like the signal force warnings because sometimes you, the people could put in a one and I get it, it's a timeline, it's a stepping up, but I would prefer anybody that it's expected to be in the path of the storm gets put out a typhoon warning. There's no signal, no building up to it, just it's coming, but that's in my humble opinion. I've only been doing this for shoot upwards of 15 years now and I've seen storm after storm and how they impact people. All right, Atsani, way out here towards the south of Guam. I'm just touching in on this because it is still south of Guam. It is going to bring some good waves along the southern portions of the islands there. Eventually move off here towards the northwest, towards the north of Yap. Here's the key thing I want you to take away from this. From Okinawa, southern Japan, Taiwan to the Philippines. Look at this cone of air. It is absolutely massive. This is not, this is not uh, an air. <laughs> the numerical guidance, GFS actually brings it in this direction. ECMWF wants to recurve it. It's all about a trough that comes in. It could pull this out with a high pressure right off there over Taiwan. There's a big split. It's still developing. We don't have recon to find a center of circulation, so we don't really know where it's starting at. So thus the huge split on this. So here's the main point of this long video. Typhoon, likely landfall, Sunday night into Monday morning in central Luzon. Atsani is developing south of Guam. Of course, I want to keep an eye on that. But let's continue to watch Coney here, uh, known as Rolling in the Philippines. And then we'll talk about the next storm. So much to talk about here, guys. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, please let me know down in the comment box below. I always appreciate all that feedback. Uh, I can't stress enough, this storm has just intensified and it is a dangerous one. So stay safe out there and take those warnings from your local agencies seriously. Uh, even if I'm saying one thing and if Pegasus says, get out of there, it's coming your way, always listen to them first. The guys on the ground, they got plenty of experience. They know what they're talking about. Um, stay safe out there.